The role of forest lands and watersheds is crucial in sustaining the development of a bustling metropolis like Cebu. How do we care for these precious resources despite a growing population? Allow me to bring you to the central Cebu protected landscape. Fragmented forests, rolling into steep, rugged terrain, opening to wide valleys. A drainage basin that pumps life, giving water to a bustling metropolis. This is a central Cebu protected landscape. At the heart of the province of Cebu, the Central Cebu Protected Landscape, or CCPL, spans 29,062 hectares of adjoining forest lands and watersheds. Established as a protected landscape on June 7, 2007, by virtue of Republic Act 9486, CCPL is a consolidation of the Bohisan Watershed Forest Reserve. Mananga Watershed Forest Reserve, Kotkot Lusaran Watershed Forest Reserve, Sudlon National Park, and Central Cebu National Park. Its steep, long, narrow mountains and short rivers supply fresh water to Metro Cebu, home to more than a million Filipinos. It's the best place and the only place where you could harness the rain and feed Cebu with water. Rivers, the watersheds are there, and not only the land, it, it's just the right geography, right kind of soil to cut the water, put it into our depository, the underground, and then water the entire metro Cebu. And that's the very reason. That's why Cebu is very, very progressive, because it has water. Aside from being a major source of fresh water, Central Cebu Protected Landscape is a crucial habitat for 144 endemic plants and approximately 188 species of birds, reptiles, and mammals. CCPL is also rich in biodiversity. It is identified as a key biodiversity area number 149. It is also an important bird area number 68 and a conservation priority area number 102. With this, we can look at uh, CCPL as rich in biodiversity. The flora found in CCPL in our latest biodiversity monitoring system, we found out about 150 woody tree species. Of that, nine uh, dipterocarp species one of the unique species found therein is the Cebu cinnamon or cinnamomon cebuensis. We have also identified about 151 fern species. We did have dipterocarps at one time. We, we found seven species when we did our survey here. We know there was Almasiga, which was very widespread in the upper elevations at one time. However, most of that was cut out because it's the prime wood that you use for the facing on the guitar. It's the sounding board. 
so it was taken out many many years ago but there are remnant trees that are left there sa flora natin marami dito kasi mayroon pa kaming cinnamon tree ngayon dito sa atin may mother tree pa tayo sa barangay Gaas at dalawang mother tree na kinuna namin ng uh, mga wildlings aside from that we have also that red lawaan you have this uh, apitong and then the magkuno the very hard wood and then uh, aside from that uh, we have that tangili on fauna again on the biodiversity monitoring system we found out that about 64 bird species was uh, identified actually during our last assessment in tabunan forest alone we have uh, 93 species we have uh, 13 bird species also identified. This is the uh, strict breasted bulbul and the black shama. Aside from the avian species, we have also identified uh, a species of amphibian, uh, arachnids, and other species in the area. Sa fauna, Marami tayo ditong pinag-conserve din namin mga civet cat. We can also uh, see uh, sibo flower picker here in Gaas because it's very near from Tabunan Forest. Pwede lang na mag ano lang, tumawid lang yung ibon uh, forest area namin at saka yung Tabunan Forest. Ang mga ibon itong nakikita sa amin ay yung white fantail, copper smith, munia, sparrow, brown earth dove, mangrove caterpillar. Philippine Bulbul, White-Eyed Kingfisher, Tony Grassbird, Asian Glucy, Olibak Sunbird, Swiplet. Unlike others, the protected landscape is made up of fragmented forests rather than a single contiguous area. Sadly, timber poaching, charcoal production, housing and settlement, erosion and non-timber crop cultivation are slowly destroying Central Cebu protected landscape. On the threats faced by CCPL, actually CCPL is in the central part of Cebu province and very near to Cebu City. So because of its location, it is very near to the urban areas. This is the very number one threat in the conservation aspect of CCPL because of its uh, vicinity in the urban area. And aside from that, other threats are on the agriculture, conversion of areas to agriculture. We have this legal poaching and some of the people from urban areas migrate to the protected area or CCPL. With that, it is very problematic in the Central Cebu Protected Landscape. If you will go right now to our protected area, it's more of an agricultural country. It's 28,000 plus hectares of protected area, but the natural forest is not even more than 1%. It's very small. You walk to the fragmented forest for a kilometer and after that the forest is no more is an agricultural land na puputol ako ng kahoy ma'am dati kasi dito wala na kaming ibang source sa ano eh livelihood namin kailangan talaga namin kumain tatlong bisis isang araw kaya nga wala na talagang ibang magawa kasi mas mahal dito yung oling at saka yung mga panggatong To mitigate the impact of these threats, immediate solutions are collectively being done by the DNR, the Central Cebu Protected Landscape, Protected Area Management Board, Soil and Water Conservation Foundation, the local government units, and other stakeholders. Reforestation efforts have given birth to man-made forests, while ecotourism activities have opened up new livelihood opportunities for the residents. Ecotourism site namin, gumagawa kami ng mga rides, uh, horseback riding, at ayong mga kaingero dati, gigawa namin, gaginawa namin crow para siya nalang maghila sa kabayo, 
may pang-araw-araw na siya na asahod kasi yon 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 yung kinahanap nila eh, pa, yung may makain sila araw-araw at may mga ano kami ski bike yung tour guide habal-habal driver kasi galing sa highway yung turista hindi namin pa pasukin dito kung hindi makasakay ng habal-habal para yung dating kay Ngiro na, na mayroon ng motor makapasahiro na siya papunta dito may pamasahe na at pabalik may pangaraw-araw na rin yung driver at gumagawa kami ng mga abaca fiber inorganisa namin yung mga tao dito na dati rin kay Ngiro na magtatanim na lang ng abaca kasi maraming market sa abaca at yung mga taga extract may araw-araw na rin silang makakain kasi may income na One of our important conservation efforts is more on the awareness of stakeholders and communities within Central Cebu Protected Landscape. We have billboards and other signages which uh, inform people of the importance of the Central Cebu Protected Landscape. Aside from that, we have this Dalaw Toro which we immerse ourselves in uh, the school so that children, our pupils in high school and elementary will also learn from the conservation effort of CCPL. Aside from that, the, the National Greening Program is also implemented in the Central Cebu Protected Landscape. Also, we have these Lawin patrollers which constantly patrol areas within Central Cebu Protected Landscape. Kailangan talaga yung IEC. Paliwanag natin sa mga tao kung ano talaga ang purpose natin, bakit tayo nagkaroon ng replanting activities, tapos naintindihan nila na this is for the good of the the future generation. So that's why uh, nagtulong-tulungan na yung community. Sila na mismo humingi ng mga seedlings tapos sila na mismo yung nagtanim talaga. From their initiative na nagkaroon ng tree planting activities so that uh, sila talaga. Key players in the conservation and management of the Central Cebu Protected Landscape aim for sustainability by instituting policies deputizing park wardens and securing adequate funds, they are clearly investing on the protection of the environment for the future generations of Cebu. Our partners in the conservation efforts of uh, the Central Cebu Protected Landscape are the people's organization within the protected area. We have also a strong support from the uh, non-government organization which assists us in the conservation effort of the protected area. And also other government agencies like the Mines and Geoscience Bureau also appropriate areas in CCPL wherein mining companies develop areas or rehabilitate areas so that this will be transformed back into a forest Continuous conservation efforts with an undercurrent of sustainable development secures the fragile Central Cebu protected landscape as an eternal fountain of water and a vital natural resource for the people of Cebu. In Romblon, all eyes of adventurous hikers and mountain climbers are focused on Mount Gitingiting Natural Park. This is the centerpiece of one of the country's havens of biodiversity. When in Romblon, it is impossible to miss the raw and jagged beauty of Mount Gitingiting. At the heart of the Sibuyan Sea is a crescent-shaped island where this gigantic mountain destination is found. It is a centerpiece of one of the country's havens of biodiversity, 
Since 1996, when it was declared as protected area by virtue of Presidential Proclamation 746, it became known as Mount Gitingiting Natural Park. The mountain and its surrounding landscape, including the neighboring peak, Mount Nailog, have enjoyed the much-needed protection. On June 22, 2018, with the Republic Act No. 7586 as amended by Republic Act No. 11038, or the Expanded National Integrated Protected Area System Act of 2018, Mount Gitingiting Natural Park was one of the 94 protected areas that have been legislated by Congress. In the local dialect, the word Gitting Gitting means jagged. To island residents and mountaineers alike, the spiked profile of this giant landform serves as an ominous warning to take caution and extreme care in conquering its difficult and dangerous slopes. My height po siya na 2,058 meters above sea level. Ang Mount Kitingiting Natural Park din po ay isa sa pinakamahirap na akyatin ng ating mga mountaineers. Kailangan mo talaga ang skill no, para makaakyat ka hanggang sa summit. Ang mga umaakyat po dyan ay may training. Hindi pwedeng baguhan umakyat dahil nga madidisgrasya lang. Nicknamed Mount G2 by mountaineers, the wicked slopes of Mount Kitingiting attract only the most daring of climbers. Uh, these perilous traits lead to extensive forests. Higher segments near the top are dotted by sharp boulders and ultramafic rocks that resemble the teeth of a saw. At the summit is a heathland dominated by grasses with stunted species of trees amid serrated ridges. Hardly touched by man for its remoteness, the mountain has remained a vital source of life. Ito po ang pinagsisimulan ng daloy ng buhay at ang mga tao sa baba ay dependent dito sa resources o uh, natural resources na binibigay ng parke. Kagaya ng malinis na tubig, malinis na hangin, magandang temperatura. Dito sa Sibuyan, dito matatagpuan ang pinakamalinis na ilog sa buong Pilipinas for three times na nanalo po yan ang Cantingas River. Dito lang po yan sa Sibuyan matatagpuan. Indeed, water flowing from its mountain springs and clean rivers are deemed fit for consumption by locals from the three municipalities of the island, Magdiwang, Kahidjokan, and San Fernando. Frequently compared to the Galapagos, Sibuyan Island ranks among the world's most untouched ecosystems with extensive dense forests that are home to many endemic species. Ang Mount Gitingiting Natural Park or ang Sibuyan Island ay mayroon din pong 700 vascular plants at 54 species ay endemic sa Sibuyan lamang. Pinatawag na Galapagos of Asia din ang Sibuyan Island dahil po sa ganong katangian no? na marami dito ang mga endemic na mga samot sa buhay na halaman at hayop, kagaya ng Sibuyan Katmon. Mayroon kami rito ang Laniting Gubat. Mayroon po kami rito ang Mangga Chapoy. At uh, Pilis, na isang klasing palm at tibang yan. At marami pa pong iba no, na patuloy na nadidiscovery ng ating mga siyantipiko na dumadayo rito. Mayroon din po kami dito ang mga hayop na endemic kagaya ng Rufus Lord King Peaser, Quadrasi Flying Lizard, dito lang din matatagpuan sa Sibuyan Island. Mayroon din po kami dito ang Philippine Chubnost Bat. Mayroon din po kami ang Sibuyan Figme Fruit Bat na isang klaseng paneke na napakaliit. Among the most outstanding rare species in the upper reaches of the mountain is a Sibuyan pitcher plant that can only be found here. Mountaineers usually take souvenir photos with the plant as proof of their conquest. Over time, the growing population and the influx of commerce have created environmental challenges for the island. Other threats include unsustainable mining, 
and illegal logging of precious timber. Although na hindi talaga siya grabbing issue, pero gusto ko matigil yan. Dahil kabawasan yan sa resources and sa mga biodiversity. Nasisira yung natural na flow ng forest ecosystem dahil doon sa paninira o pamumutol ng mga kahoy. Ako ay isa po dating lagi illegal. Pero nung naramdaman namin na paubos na paubos na yung mga kahoy, saka ramdam na rin namin na malalagay na po kami sa alanganin, kaya napag-isipan ko na itigil ko na yung pag-illegal. Tinulungan ako ni Sir, ay pinyasap niya ako sa din arbi lang blue and green. Medyo na, nawala na yung mga dating tuloy-tuloy na pag-illegal, lalo na yung mga pag-chichinson on. Ngayon mang wala na. Marami kami natulungan niya na makuha na bilang kasapi dito sa din. Critical to the protection and conservation of the island is an enlightened community of residents, mindful of the role of indigenous peoples who have cared for and lived with nature for centuries. Yung tatlong munisipyo po ay nagtutulong-tulong para punduhan taon-taon ang pag-hire ng tinatawag natin na LGU Rangers. Nag-IEC kami sa mga community, sa mga schools, nagbibigay kami ng aral. Tinuturo namin sa mga estudyante yung mga importance ng pagtatanim, Tinuturo namin sa kanila ang epekto ng pagkawala ng forest sa kinabukasan. Lalo na lalo na yung epekto ng wala ng kahoy at yung benefit na makukuha nila upon planting of trees. At sa ngayong involvement naman nila doon, kung may project reforestation, sila ang magtatanim at babayaran po ng project ng DNR pagtanim nila. Measures have been taken to resolve the increasing problem of waste management, spearheaded by the local government of Magdiwang. As a prime mountaineering destination in the region, it is important that rules on tourist safety and protection be laid out clearly. Ang pambi po ay nag-set ng regulations when it comes to mountaineering. At isa po dito ay yung ratio ng guiding kagaya ng dito sa traditional trail, ang ratio ng guide sa mountaineer ay 1 is to 5. And supporter is optional po yan. No? Doon naman po sa kabilang Olango Trail, sa San Fernando, ang takeoff, ay hard climb po doon sa lugar na yon. So, ang ratio po doon is 1 is to 3. One guide equals to 3 mountaineers. At ang mountaineering, yung uh, kanyang itinerary ay three days po ang sinet ng pambi para maabot mo yung summit. Just as critical is the establishment of infrastructure that will be able to support ecotourism activities. Ang plano namin ay maging uh, number one uh, ecotourism destination sa Memaropa ang Magdiwang, especially yung Sibuyan Island. Malaking potensyal ng aming lugar dahil ito yung pinaka-last frontier no, at pinaka-siksik na, na gubat sa buong Pilipinas. And at the same time, kung makita nyo, sa pagpunta nyo, nakita nyo, naka-red carpet kayo ng, ng, ng bakawan. Yung aming shoreline ay punong-puno ng bakawan. So, yan ang pinagmamalaki namin at hindi kayo makakita sa ibang lugar na katulad ng meron kami dito. In the meantime, Continuous research on Sibuyan Island's rare and endemic species require institutional and academic support. Patuloy yung mga programa na ginagawa ng Bayay Sibuyanon, hindi lamang po sa environmental protection, kundi sa pagtulong sa mga katutubo. Naniniwala po kasi kami na kapag ang kultura ng katutubo ay mayaman at nakonserba, ang kagubatan o ang kapaligiran ay nagiging mayaman din at napapangalagaan. Napakaliit po ng sibuyan at napakasayang naman kung ito ay hahaya ang masira ng ganun-ganun na lamang. Gusto po namin ma-experience nyo ang Galapagos Island of Asia, Sibuyan Island. Dayuhin nyo po at ma-experience nyo ang lugar, napakagandang lugar namin dito sa Sibuyan. 
Today, the activism to establish a stronger, more consolidated effort to conserve Sibuyan Island's fragile ecosystem continues. As local stakeholders and advocates join hands to protect and promote the wild splendor of Mount Giting Giting Natural Park. When was the last time you visited a natural park or a protected sanctuary? If you have not, I urge you to visit at least one each year or perhaps more because when you are right inside a protected area, you will immediately understand why we need to care for our fragile earth.